And in recognition of your outstanding performance, superior dedication, positive attitude, strong work ethic, as Esbury Park High School's first female re wrestler, keep reaching for the stars from the city of Esbury Park. So we want to present you with that. And I think our Assemblywoman Downey also wants to say something very quick. Oh, very quick. All right. Well, I wanted to, I really wanted to say how much we are so proud of you. So we have a resolution from the state of New Jersey. It's from the Senator, State Senator Vingo Powell, from also from me, Joanne Downey, your Assemblywoman, and also the Assemblyman, Eric Hotelli. It's signed by the Senate President, Steve Sweeney, and it's signed by the, also the Assembly Speaker, Craig Coughlin. And we are just amazed. And we wrote, we have all of the things, all of, all of your accomplishments. I won't read them since they wanted me to be quick, but we really mentioned everything, including your academic success, especially what you've done here in wrestling for women, all you've done for young women. Because honestly, I'm so impressed, and it just pushes us further ahead in all realms, meaning women ahead. What you have done is you're a trailblazer. And that's what we'll continue to remember always. I have two little girls who are nine and seven. So if they ever said to me, Mommy, I want to, I want to go and wrestle, or I want to do this, I want to do that, i say, yes, you can. Look, I'll give you an example. You're that example. Thank so you've done that for all the little girls out there. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> and we want to give an opportunity, did if you want to just say a couple of words, and maybe um, your principal might want to say a couple of words. One of the reasons, and coach, this is a really special thing for us in Asbury Park, is I think all of you know it's also Women's History Month, which is, so the fact that we get to honor you on the month of Women's History Month, and you being a record breaker in terms of wrestling, that is, uh, makes the city so, so proud. Do you want to say a couple words or thank a few people? Um. I would like to thank my coach for not letting me quit when I wanted to. When I wanted to be lazy, he always said, Ditta, get out here. <laughs> and he's not only my coach, he's like one of my best friends. Aww. I think it's pretty obvious how proud we are. But I just want to say, not only is she the first female wrestler of Asbury Park High School. She's the top, she's the fifth, um, the number five female wrestler in the state. I just had to point that out. Top five in the state. Yeah, so she did a first and a first at the same time. So again, we're just super proud of her. I'm grateful for her coach who, like she said, makes her work hard, stays on her. Grateful to her mom that she doesn't come to the school and fuss at us for being so hard on her. Um, and of course, I stay on her about her academics because that's first and foremost. Um, so I just want to say thank you to Coach Artizone for being amazing um, in every aspect. Um, and just all of our supporters. We're all Team Ditta. We were all in Atlantic City. Um, Miss M videotaping her uncle. We were all there, Uncle Styles, holding up the, the sign in the stands. And we will continue to support her because we still she still has two more years, everybody. <laughs> yes. So we're going for number one in the state. Yes. So up and coming. I hope my room. Absolutely. So and to the city council, thank you for always keeping us, you know, in mind, Asbury Park High School and recognizing our students for their success. We do appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> So we want to thank everyone for coming out. And I also want to give one more thank you to APTV, who's going to be doing a quick interview uh, in the back. And you're going to, so those of you who are watching this at home, you're going to um, not only get to see this presentation during our council meeting, but APTV is going to be putting together a quick interview as well, kind of describing the experience and hopefully talking a little bit about it, Atlantic City and that experience and being, you know, fifth in the state uh, and a, a pioneer in this, um, in the wrestling industry. So thank you.
and Casey Pilato, who puts up with Joe Pilato. <laughs> Um, so one of the one of the reasons this is such a great event is the turnaround also in getting checks to the non local nonprofits in Asbury Park. I mean, it, it, Joe's a machine in, in getting that done. So I'm just going to read his letter to Mayor Moore and Council on Sunday, March 10th. The Asbury Park Fishing Club held its 27th annual fishing show in Convention Hall. Nearly 2,000 visitors braved the blustery March winds and rain to visit Asbury Park's beachfront for the event. The members of the Asbury Park Fishing Club are grateful to. Gary Matola and Chris Femiano and, and their highly competent team from Madison Marquette for facilitating our use of Convention Hall. The success of this year's annual fishing show is a result of the volunteerism of more than 100 members of the Asbury Park Fishing Club. And that is the oldest fishing club, in one, oldest saltwater fishing club in the United States. We're proud to distribute the proceeds from our show to many local organizations. These are all personally a bunch of my favorites. In addition to donations made to other area nonprofits, it is with great pride that I present the city council the following contributions. Um, so our first contribution for $2,000 is one of Asbury's favorites and local heroes, the Asbury Park Little League. Danny. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna name everybody who's getting this, so everybody just come up when I say the name of your organization. The Asbury Park Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> big Brothers, Big Sisters of Monmouth County. <laughs> Asbury Park Rodeo for Recreation. <laughs> Leisha, you should come up for that. The Asbury Park Boardwalk Rescue. <laughs> Yay, Debbie. The Asbury Park Firemen's Fund. The Asbury Park Toy Drive and the Asbury Park Toy Drive Christmas in July. And I wanna again thank Joey and Casey Pilato for doing this every year and it being such an amazing event. It is amazing because Joey takes in the money on a Sunday and he calls me Sunday night and says, John, the checks are drawn up. Will you give them out Wednesday? I mean, that's unbelievable in America. And I'm going to let everybody speak a couple minutes because they deserve and they're great organizations. So we'll start off and just go right down the road. Good evening, everybody. My name is Aaron Stiles from the Monmouth County Boys and Girls Club. I want to say thank you on behalf of the Boys and Girls Club of Monmouth County for your ongoing commitment to supporting us. and and being passionate and being there for the kids. Thank you. My name is Danny McKee from the Asbury Park Little League. We thank Joey Pilato for this donation, the Asbury Park Fishing Club. And we use this money not only for our general expenses, but also specifically for our summer camp program. And I wanted to let Nicholas Chateauan say something about the summer camp and um, Calvin Joseph say something about the Little League group. Good morning, I'm like, good evening. My name is Nicholas Chatron, and um, at, the, at the summer camp in Pennsylvania, like, we learn how to play the game more. We learn how to um, speak to one another. We learn how to work together. Um, we go swimming. We have games. We, we practice. We like learn a lot of stuff that we never knew and yeah have fun, right? and have fun. All right. thank you very thank you very much good afternoon everybody my name is calvin joseph from the little league and thank you for um coach danny and coach will president and thank you for making the um little league be free for no money and thank you for making us practice so we could be better so one day we could be in the mlb thank you Aww. Well, again, I just want to say thanks again, and thanks everybody, and Danny and these kids as an example of what we're trying to do in Asbury Park. I do appreciate you, and I love all you guys, and thanks for everything. Hello, I'm uh, Jenna Rucka from Big Brothers Big Sisters of Monmouth and Middlesex County. Um, thank you so much for this donation. All donations to us go, you know, right to our one one-on-one -on -one mentoring programs that really help um, so many kids in um, both counties, but particularly Asbury Park. We also have five um, school-based and workplace partnership programs in Asbury Park, where we serve um, over 100 children from the middle school and the high school, also. So 
it hits close to home in Asbury. We're right on Bond Street also, so we're always looking for volunteers and mentors and you know adults here in Asbury Park. So if you have some time to volunteer, you know, think about us. Thank you again. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leisha Floyd, Recreation Director for the City of Asbury Park. Joe Pilata, thank you so much for always supporting us. Rodeo for Recreation, April 2020. Everybody mark your calendars. <laughs> Hi, I'm Debbie Delissa. I'm the uh, Director of Asbury Boardwalk Rescue. I'd like to especially thank Joe Pilato, one of my favorite people and a true Asbury Park hero for including us in his donations. We represent those who cannot speak for themselves. We help all the animals in Asbury Park and also the other animals in needs for rescues that might not have the means and the, um, uh, the money to help the ones that they need to help. My name is Kevin Ketty. I'm the fire chief here in Asbury Park. And on behalf of the Firefighters Association, I'd like to thank Joe Plato and the Asbury Park Fishing Club for this a generous, generous donation that seems to find its way to us every year. And I just want to uh, let everybody know that this money goes into the Firefighters Charitable Trust Fund, and every penny finds its way back into the community throughout the year. Thank you. Hi, my name is Connie Breach. I'm the founder of the Asbury Park Toy Drive myself and Barbara Lazinski, uh, she's here. If it wasn't for people like Joe Pilato and the Fishing Club, we wouldn't be here for 19 years. So we are into our 19th year now, serving the children of Asbury Park, and I'd like to thank everybody who's helped us over the past years, and hopefully we're gonna be around for a, while, a little while longer. So, everybody over for a picture. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. And one person I didn't thank when we were giving the the plaque to to Dida was um, our amazing staff, Leisha Floyd, who made sure that we had the plaque, that this took place tonight, and that we. Um, so I think just stand up, Leish, um, and that we that this was all pulled off because of Leisha. So we should we should absolutely acknowledge that. Next on the agenda is the proclamation celebrating the Rotary Club's 100th anniversary. Okay, so the Rotary's been here for 100 years in Asbury Park. I don't think this is on. It is. You have to speak up. All right. Okay. Okay, so whereas the Rotary Club of Asbury Park was chartered in April 1919 by the International Association of Rotary Clubs, as the 496th Rotary Club in the world. And whereas under the leadership of their first president, J. Lyle Kinmouth, the club immediately commenced to enrich the lives of residents of Asbury Park and Monmouth County by putting the club motto, service above self, into action. And whereas in the 1920s, the club expanded its territorial reach to integrate members from the greater Asbury Park area, including but not limited to the neighboring towns of Neptune, Deal, Ocean, and Bradley Beach. And whereas between 1920 and 1930, the club's commitment and concern for the future of the city of Asbury Park motivated them to assist with the planning and building of the new high school and football field and to provide the high school band with their first uniforms. And whereas over the years, the club has hosted many national and international celebrities, dignitaries, including First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and Babe Ruth, as well as area governors and senators. 
And whereas the club has a productivity to support local charities, such as the Salvation Army, Boy Scouts, local YMCA, and those aimed at children's interests, as well as Jersey Shore University Medical Center and Rotary International's fight to eradicate polio worldwide. And whereas several local and national organizations have benefited from the Rotary Club of Asbury Park's charitable endeavors and service projects, including HAPCOR, Sisters Academy, Asbury Park Fire Department, and Little League, the honor tour to Washington, D.C. for local vets, collecting used bikes for Second Life Bikes, yearly scholarships for Academy Charter and Asbury Park High Schools, fund the planting and refurbishment of the Fifth Avenue Veterans Memorial and helping to plant the Memorial Garden in Library Square Park. Now therefore be it resolved that Mayor John Moore and the Asbury Park City Council do hereby recognize and congratulate the Rotary Club of Asbury Park for 100 years of service and devotion to the residents and future generations within the city of Asbury Park and the greater Asbury Park area. Congratulations. So on behalf of the Asbury Park Rotary, we, we'd like to thank the council for this proclamation. And we have been here for 100 years working in the area. And just over the past 10 years, the club has raised over $500,000 <clears> that we've given to, to local charities in the area, as well as over uh, $150,000 internationally that we've done. One of, the, one of the biggest things we're, we're very proud of is for years we've been giving out scholarships. So um, anybody, any seniors that are, there happen to be there, if you know any seniors in the high schools in here in town, um, it's a, it's a $2,000 scholarship that we give out every year. Uh, so everyone's welcome to participate. And well, well, we give one to each of the, the high schools, okay. not only the two here in Asbury, but one for Neptune and one for Ocean also. Yeah, so we give out four a year. Um, and uh, we just uh, appreciate the the uh, the proclamation and thank you everyone. Oh, in where, where's Mar, where's Marta? Tell tell us tell them about the event we're having. Hi, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. So again, we're the 100th year for the Asbury Park Rotary Club. We have a ton of events happening this year, but our biggest celebration is on April 13th. Again, celebrating this amazing event of 100 years of Rotary. So come to us, it's a deal golf and country club. We have a great band, we have great people. It's gonna be a big, huge party. And um, hopefully all of you saw us also this weekend at the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Was everyone there? Right? It was a great parade. And thank you, Asbury Park, for putting that together for all of us. Uh, we were the grand marshals of the parade this weekend, which was extra special. Um, the other thing that we're doing at the event is we're now selling 50-50 tickets for a $10,000 prize. And that goes to our scholarships and to the veterans. So if you'd like a ticket, just ask one of us. We have plenty. Hi, I'm Mike Fornino, and uh, I've been in Asbury Park since 1962, and I've been a Rotary member since 1964, and came to the Raspberry Club in 63, uh, 66. I'm sorry, but you know what? Many people don't know what Rotary does. We're we're 33,000 clubs around the world, about 1.24 million members, and um, our biggest accomplishment, in my opinion is the fact that in 1985, there were about 400,000 cases of polio in the world. And Rotary decided that they were gonna take on the challenge of eliminating polio from the face of the earth. They estimated it would cost $120 million. They worldwide raised 240 million. They went out into the field and they found out these kids not only needed polio shots, they needed measles and diphtheria and everything else. So it became the name of Polio Plus. As of this date, we have spent of our money, not government money, private money of $1.62 billion. There are now about six cases of polio in the world. So, I mean, to me, I mean, I, as, a, as my age, I remember what polio was. And some, some of the older folks would know. It was a terrible, terrible scourge, especially with kids. And, you know, I, I couldn't be more proud to be in a, a Rotarian than anything I can think of. Uh, and I was here 
when Asbury was Asbury, I was here during the riots and the bad time, and now you see what, how glorious it is to see Asbury Park coming back. Isn't that great? I mean, isn't that great? Can't you pat, pat, yourself, pat yourself on the back? It's, it's coming, it ain't here yet, but boy, I tell you, it's coming. It's coming. And, and these Rotarians, in my opinion, are the finest people in the world. This group of people will do anything you ask them to do if it's at all possible. Okay, thank you for coming. Anybody else want to say anything? All right, thanks to the Rotary for all you do for our city. Hi, is Judy Brown here? Nice. Judy Brown? Okay. We have one more proclamation. We are giving a proclamation to Ruth Bell, and this is in honor of her 100th birthday. This. <laughs> This Saturday, she's going to be honored at a luncheon given by the National Council of Negro Women. So I just want to read this proclamation of this amazing woman. Whereas Mrs. Ruth Bell is a, pro is a proponent of lifelong learning and has chosen to lead by example by furthering her education at Tuskegee Institute, Abbey Business School of New York, Brookdale Community College, and Keene University. And whereas she has been recognized by many organizations for her magnanimous work, including Literacy Volunteers of Monmouth County's Tutor of the Year, the Central Jersey Club of the National Association of Negro Business Women's Club, Inc., Sojourner Truth Award, and the Women of Distinction Award from Seropathis, where she has served in several executive positions, including three terms as president. And whereas Mrs. Bell recognized that learning is not contained to a classroom setting and has actively committed herself to support the needs of children and the community through engaging activities that embolden personal growth. And whereas after being appointed to the Asbury Park Housing Authority, she advocated for recreation activities for the youth and with the Housing Authority's permission, enlisted the help of tenants, the Asbury Park Public Library, and Bangs Avenue School to remodel the basement of Building 5 in the Lincoln Village with a library, game room, and space for karate and arts and crafts activities. And whereas her passion for the community and leadership skills led the late Dorothy L. McNish to select her for a child study team position with the Asbury Park Board of Education, where they built strong parent-school relationships. And whereas Mrs. Bell's many outreach advocacy and support endeavors within the city and the greater Asbury Park area include being a committed life member of the National Council of Negro Women, former member of the Asbury Park Public Library Board of Trustees, and a devoted church member prove her to be a pillar in our community. Now therefore be it resolved that Mayor Moore and the Asbury Park City Council applaud and acknowledge Mrs. Ruth Bell for her many years of outstanding dedication to the community and celebrate her on her 100th birthday.
We'll move on to special event applications. Leisha. Thank you everyone for coming. Yep. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The first application before you is the St. Patrick's Day Pub Crawl on March 16th. Next is the STEM Initiative. Clean Ocean Action Beach Sweeps. The city's annual Easter Pageant and Parade. Citywide Yard Sale on April 27th. The New Jersey Marathon, Mary's Place 8th Annual Walkathon, the Coast to Coast MS Bike Race, Triumph in Life Churches Memorial Day Carnival, <coughs> Jump for Joy, which will be held in Springwood Park on May 25th, Super Safe Summer, Summer Kickoff Carnival, Surf Riders Foundation Family Day, Into the Mystic, Caribbean Splash 2019, See Here Now Festival on April 21st and 22nd, Lung Cancer Research Free to Breathe Walk, Krampus 2019, and we have three wedding applications May 18th, October 12th, and October 18th. Are there any questions on any of the applications? Yes. Uh, St. Patrick's Day pub crawl. Mm -hmm. Are they paying for police for the central business district since they're promoting this event? There is one bar that has hired one officer for the event. Um, as of this afternoon, that's the only information that the police department had. No, I got updated information. Okay. They're hiring three. Oh, three? For, okay. From the hours of about two to nine. Okay. Okay. And then like the Caribbean Splash, I have no problem with it. We're reserving the date and we're waiting to see what the bands are before it's a go. Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll move on to review of this evening's agenda items. Consent Agenda Resolutions 2019-106 is the special event applications. Resolution 2019-107 is authorizing the transfer of real estate tax credits from 2018 to 2019. These are properties that had overpaid or prepaid taxes. We're moving it from last fiscal year to this fiscal year. 2019-108 um, is the transfer of appropriation reserves in fiscal year 2018. As you know, you can transfer money within um, line items between uh, for the prior year through March. Um, this transfers monies into the appropriation reserve accounts. 2019-109 uh, is an RCA award. 2019-110 establishes the beach regulations for the 2019 season. 2019-111 is appointing a member to the Wesley Lake Commission. 2019-112 is disposition of surplus property. And 2019-113 is granting tenure to the tax assessor. This is a modification from the original resolution as per the Department of Treasury. Um, is there any questions on the consent items? Hearing none, we'll move on to the individual resolutions. Resolution 2019-114 is amending the temporary budget appropriations for 2019. Um, this gets us through the temporary budget process through June. We anticipate introducing the budget at the next meeting with approval in April, uh, but this is an administrative action that we're requesting approval on so we don't have to keep changing budget numbers internally. 2019-115 is a resolution uh, approving the payment of bills. 2019-116 and 117 are pointing to redevelopment councils, Marzidi Falcone and Archer Greiner. 2019-118 is approving a change order for Bridge and Heck Street. 2019-119 um, is purchase of um, radios, dual quad band radios for the fire department. 
2019-121 is a resolution of the mayor and council acting as redevelopment entity granting conceptual approval to Madison Asbury Retail regarding the renovation to the 4th Avenue Pavilion and referring this matter to the Planning Board. 2019-121 is a resolution of the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park acting as a redevelopment entity granting conceptual approval to Asbury Partners LLC regarding the quote-unquote Beach Club installation on Block 4502, Lot 1.23, 1500 Ocean Avenue and referring this matter to the Planning Board for appropriate approvals. Is there any questions on individual resolutions? Moving forward to ordinances for second reading tonight, 2019-4 um, designates specific spots for electric or plug-in hy hybrid vehicles. In the ordinance is the location of um, the proposed uh, electric charging stations. 2019-5 amends park, traffic and parking regulations. For, for ordinances 2019-4 and-5, the transportation director, Michael Manzella, is here for any further questions. 2019-6, um, which is the bond ordinance for $15 million for the possible boardwalk improvements, staff is requesting to table that at this time. 2019-7 is um, through the parking utility for replacement of a traffic signal. Um, as you know, as we've talked about over the last couple of years, we're currently replacing traffic signals that are on wires with the current um, standards of being on a pole and up to code. Resolution 2019-8 is appropriating $200,000 from the beach utility. Uh, this would connect the city and the sewer plant um, via fiber network and installing security cameras throughout that run. Um, more concentrated on the beach and the boardwalk itself. Uh, this would be off the, if this is approved tonight, the approval of the camera purchases would be done via resolution at a later time. And 2019-9 is a bond ordinance, the one that we do every year um, for general purchases such as equipment, computers, vehicles, and resolution 2019-10 is a salary ordinance creating the position of a deputy tax assessor. Um, is there any questions on the proposed yeah. ordinances tonight? 2019-6 is the 15 million, it, it's staff's recommendation to table tonight. Is that gonna be a two week table or what? what what's the problem? Uh, what we're looking at is the final financial numbers of it. Um, and we actually should be pretty close in discussions with iStar of the actual amount. Uh, the engineers are working on it, so we might be able to reduce that number and not have it as high. And we've also, we're have also we also looking in to, does it make financial sense to include the lifeguard station, um, which needs to be completed into this money also. So it might be cheaper to do two things at once than two things at two separate times. So we hope to have that information at the next meeting. Would that be a substantial change where it have to go back to starting gate? We we think so. Um, that's one of the things that myself and bond council and the CFO and the financial advisor are looking at. Um, but we still have plenty of time since there is, we're still discussing with ISTAR the cost of the improvements. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Matters by the city council. I've got nothing at this time. Um, I just want to announce that there's going to be a job fair put on by the Monmouth County Workforce Development Fund. It's going to take place at Brookdale on Friday, April 12th. It's one day only. It's a free event. It's open to everyone. It'll be full and part-time jobs, temporary employment, and also internship opportunities. There are over 140 employers that are going to be present at this job fair. Um, they represent all kinds of industries from healthcare, technology, education, financial services. This is a great opportunity. So if you are looking to change careers or looking for a new job, this day, Friday, April 12th, and it's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So anybody, please come out. As a resident of this town for so many years and as a councilman, 
I would like to just thank uh, Elaine Chapman and Mr. Guyverson over there for their hard work on the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I mean, it was, it was, it was. I thought it was outstanding for the uh, the way the weather was and everything, and the people did come out. So thank the people for coming out and showing their support. And uh, you guys did a good job. So I just want to, me as personally, I just want to thank you all. Uh, this year, recreation have expanded, and there's a lot of things that uh, I think that there's a lot of goals that we're trying to reach. And one of the goals is to spread all over Asbury Park in different varieties of ways. Um, starting with, I would say, February, we had uh, at least 45 people come out to a card party, which everybody and we going to do a better job of communicating all over Asbury, but we had 45, 45 to 50 people come out and play any type of cards they want. We also had two dances, we call it Friday Night Out, where it takes you back to the 50s to the day. And it was just, it was just a good feeling to see people out there dancing. Some people remind me of my mother and father when they was trying to dance, and it was just fun. And there's a lot of things that the recreation is uh, really trying to do this year. So we ask for your participation. And if you want to see Leisha, see me or see anyone on the uh, recreation committee and Arlene Chapman also. So we thank you. That's it. So I have two quick announcements and I'm also going to thank um, Leisha and Jesse of the Recreation Committee who put on a really amazing event at the Esbury Park Library um, for celebrating Dr. Seuss's, is it his birthday? I don't know what it is, but it was a really, really good event um, that had um, kids from all over the city, uh, a really amazing um, performer and um, just truly an amazing event. So thank you both for, and Esther. Um, who I know was a, a big part of that event as well. I, um, the city is hiring specials. I'm gonna bunt this to Officer Casey for a minute to just talk about you know, what we're hiring and, and what the requirements are. And um, hopefully some of you in the audience or those of you watching on APTV will give some thought to applying. So Mike. Yeah, you use yeah. one of those. That one's Somebody on. Somebody stole the other one. I don't want to talk with my back, everybody. Sorry. Uh, yes, the city is in the process of hiring class one police officers and class two police officers. Uh, class twos must be certified by the police training commission already. Class ones, uh, we only require uh, high school diploma or equivalent, um, New Jersey state driver's license, citizen of the United States. Um, class one is a low level position. Uh, it's an entry level for uh, police officers. They receive minimal training at the police academy and then they'll come out and work for us. It's a seasonal position. Um, it's, that's about it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And the deadline to apply I'm is? Sorry, uh, March 31st. You can apply online at uh, City of Asbury Park. That's it. That's it. Uh, to echo Jesse uh, Garrett, uh, Eileen, uh, Sammy Boyd, the entire committee, anything, anybody and everybody that worked on the parade and participated in the parade. Again, a great job as usual. Uh, fantastic. Uh, we beat the weather. And can't thank you enough. It's, it's a very proud day for Asbury Park, so we, uh, thank you. Uh, Rotary Club. Any group that can stand together 100 years in Asbury Park, you deserve more than a proclamation. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> and again, April 13th, they have their gala at Deal Country Club. Please look, you can go online, you can find out, you don't have to go to buy the raffle tickets, so please. Anything you can do to support it, please attend. Uh, Debbie Delissa, she left, but she said something as far as Joey Pilato being one of her favorite friends. Joey Pilato is one of my favorite friends. We go back to the 60s. We worked together, we partied together, 
We've been friends for many years. A lot of you may not know who Joey Pilato is. Joey Pilato is a living legend and always will be in Asbury Park. Thank you. Matters by the city manager? None at this time. Matters by the city attorney? And nothing at this time. At this time, we'll break until the seven o'clock regular meeting. I'm gonna open up the regular council meeting. You heard her. Council Member Chapman? Here. Council Member Clayton? Here. Council Member Kendall? Yeah, here. Yep. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Here. Please rise for a silent prayer. Moment of reflection, please. <laughs> Flag salute. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 2nd, 2019, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. May I have a motion to open the meeting to the public, please? Move it. Second. Each member who wishes to speak, please come to the mic, state your name and address for the record, and each member of the public will have three minutes to speak. You're on. I'm going to try. My voice is in big trouble. Um, Ernest Mignoli, 400 Deal Lake Drive, Asbury Park, New Jersey, 07. Asbury Park. Uh, I was looking through some public records, and I became interested in some of the UEC money that was given out, and some of the people in Asbury who got it, who never paid their share back. Found some like 50000 maybe, or... So maybe you ought to look into people who got you easy money was supposed to pay some of it back, especially on the central business district. Uh, the Seventh Avenue Pavilion is collapsing, like when Convention Hall collapsed. The big supports, big chunks of concrete are coming down, breaking the benches. The boardwalk is a trip hazard. It's, a, it's an eminent hazard all around that Seventh Avenue Pavilion. I've been taking pictures and sending them to the state. Hopefully they'll come in and get something going. Uh, a study came out about 90,000 municipalities in the United States. They ranked them the best and the worst place to live. Asbury came in 45th on the bottom. Uh, there's another study by the FBI and law enforcement uh, in the state that ranks 565 municipalities for violent crime and danger, and we rank second after Camden. So those are important data. Um, I understand the city, the city manager's contract is up December 31st of 2018. There are a lot of us who would like not to see the city manager reappointed. Is there anything that we could do? Can we start a petition? Or can you hear our reasons or have a special meeting? Um, I find that the Asbury Park Press did a great job on the $6 million condo on Ocean Avenue that the only thing they missed is all the homeless people sleeping around the building and the boardwalk. So I think that should have been included in the pictures too. Um, the AP Fire Marshal has some major issues with fire escapes, inspections at the Santander and around Asbury. You see a lot of these fires, even though they're three family homes, that have 20, 30, or more people in them. When a fire like this one we just had, they get stuck up on the roof. You see the fireplace came, fire escape came loose. So gotta start to tighten up on what the fire marshal's doing. Um, the other thing is I find that the city council may have conflicts. He owns a bar in uh, Asbury, the dark city. Dark city is a pretty political place. Um, I filed an Oprah about the EPA clearance, that was a garage. It came back, they never got an EPA clearance. Same with the pizzeria, Medusa. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> and who owns Dark City? My initial findings are that the 
You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Next. You next. Let's talk about it in court. I don't want your answer. But that's obvious. Have a good time in Long Branch. Next. Hi. Uh, I'm actually not from Point, or from Asbury. I'm from Point Pleasant. Uh, my name is Brian Bard. I'm the founder of Feeling Swell. Um, we partnered with the Mental Health Association of Monmouth County, and we've what developed. What was the name of your organization? Uh, Feeling Swell. Okay. And we partnered with uh, Mental Health Association of Monmouth County to develop a fundraising model to uh, bring some mental health resources to local high schools, whatever that may mean. Um, I essentially am here to uh, just give you some literature on what we're trying to do. We're hoping for your support and hanging some banners and hanging out or hand, uh, giving permission to hand out some promotional materials uh, for the fundraiser. It goes right back into town. Um, it's a uh, relatively fast growing band, so I'm hoping I can just leave these literature and have someone email me and uh, we can move forward with that. Yes. Is that all you have? Yeah. Seriously, leave leave the literature mm -hmm. and uh, give it to Mr. Capabianco. He'll give it to Alicia Floyd. You might have to spell fill out a special event application. Yeah, great. Especially if you get have to hang banners, there's a fee for that. So. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and I'd like to stress this is something that I think is very important and I'd like it if I actually got attention for it in the future. Or, I mean, reciprocation in email. I would like to be in touch with someone. So okay, you. fantastic. Bring and it right is, up is now. Is there a date for your event? Uh, yeah, um, May 20th. It's not really an event. It's just a fundraising model. Um, and okay. essentially everyone in Asbury is willing to, or able to participate, businesses, residents, visitors. It's pretty cool. And I'd love to speak in depth with someone about it. And what was the date, May? Uh, May 25th. Great, thank you. Thank you. And yeah, if, if you want to stay for the whole meeting, wait, but if not, you, if you want to leave, you can just bring it up and give it to him now, and he'll give it to Alicia Floyd and she'll get in touch with you. That's wonderful, thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, Glenn Massimo, 1206 4th Avenue. I just wanted to pose a question to each of the council members um, with regard to the speeding that still exists on 4th Avenue. Um, is it an acceptable risk that during the period of time between 7 a.m. and 7.30 when most children would be transiting to school, that 38 vehicles were clocked doing tw between 29 and 39 miles an hour on a street that the kids need to cross to go to high school? Did I get everybody's opinion? Well, finish your three minutes. Is, is it an finish, finish is your, it acceptable <clears throat> risk? Finish your is three it, minutes. Is it an acceptable risk to the okay. students of the high school that they have to cross that road. And if it's not an acceptable risk, what is the city going to do about it? That's my three minutes. That's your three minutes? Okay. okay. Answers. If somebody wants to answer, they can answer. You've talked to Mr. Manzel, you've talked to the city manager, you've talked to myself. I don't know what data you're using tonight, so I, it's impossible. If it's your home data, I'm not saying it's no, inaccurate no, 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 or accurate. No, no, no. It's, it's the city's recording devices. Okay. So we took photographs of a car of cars passing by that monitoring device with the speed captured in it and the vehicle captured in it 38 of them within a half hour period of time can you share those pictures with us we can share them sure thank you okay uh glenn <clears throat> we yeah. talked about this on more occasions and i'm just going to ask um the city manager what is the shift the shift change on the police officers because normally we have police officers out there as you do know uh from we normally see them what about 8 30. i think the I shift know. change is 6 30. i think As you know, when this issue came up and, um, you know, we took a look at what the options were and from myself and the city engineer took a look at it and thought that many roundabouts would be a good idea. So what we did was we applied for a safe routes to school federal grant um, for almost a million dollars when several million dollars have already been spent on 4th Ave. Um, and we, we submitted that application. So we're waiting to hear back from NJDOT on the award of that application. I heard it's supposed to come out within the next month or two. And if we don't get it, then we'll reassess from there and come up with another solution. Can you call DOT tomorrow and get a more definitive date instead of a month or two? And I'm not faulting you. Yeah. I know DOT is tough to deal with, right? So, yeah. but if they could give us a better update sure. so we could get on to it quicker. Sure. Okay, thank you. Tracy Rogers, Sewell Avenue. <clears throat> uh, an interesting article came up today 
where 40 individuals were arrested for purchasing their uh, way for their, for their rich uh, uh, children to be put into colleges where they didn't benefit or have an academic standard to meet the requirements. So it brought me back to the article last week on the private beach club. And I saw in the article it says a six million dollar and you get access to a private beach club. So are we continuing to allow people to believe that they can come in and buy, buy in scoot, be it in, 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 uh, what's the word, inclusive, their inclusivity, that we just feel that anybody with money could come in and decide what our community is about. So I want to be the first to say that I'm, I'm put, I want to put up a sign that Asbury Park is not for sale, that you're not just going to bring things that are going to be uh, not available to all the residents in this community. And people feel that when they see a private beach club that sits there and they're not able to enter because they don't have enough money or to feel that they're being obstructed from, from, from uh, enjoying a beach, we have to look at what we're saying to our community. We have seen this in the 50s. We have seen this in the 60s. Let's start changing our, our method of thinking. And even if we have to say to our developers, you, you may not be, you may not want to come here because there are a lot of developers that do that want to work with this community. So let's look at what we're doing and stop uh, allowing people just to come in and say, we want to build this because we got the money and we're bringing in these rich people. I want to be involved with everybody. I don't care rich or poor, but they got to want to be involved with us. And I think we just need to put up that sign that we're not for sale. Thank you. Next. Catherine Murphy, Deal Lake Drive. I just wanted to get some clarification on the bond that's being tabled. So, um, Michael, if you could clarify, the mayor asked if this was a um, special change or significant change, and you replied yes. Will that affect the North End rebuild that was presented two weeks ago? No, I don't anticipate it. And where is the location of the lifeguard station planned for? Uh, we're still trying to figure that out. We've okay. had some internal meetings over the last year. But uh, I don't think so, and it's not going to affect it. Is, you know, after the presentation two weeks ago, the uh, initial construction was slated for the fall. So is, does that mean that you have to go back to the drawing board with new engineering plans or new, no. a new conceptual design? No. So what time frame are, are, is the community looking at? for the start of construction for the North End? We are still aiming for the fall. Okay, and when can we expect a vote on the uh, on the beach surplus bond? Uh, hopefully the next meeting, or not early April. Okay, thank you. And, and just so you know, the lifeguard station, as much as it's still up in the air, it's always been around uh, in front of the, between, the Third Avenue Pavilion and uh, say the steps going up to to the beach, basically where Duckies was in front of there, just because that's where Kaffir says it should be. So it's yeah, it's on the other end. Yep. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Samia Bassoon, fifteen oh one Ocean, Asbury Park. Um, is regarding the ordinance uh, on. Um, the installation, the 2019-8 uh, acquisition and installation of security camera. Michael, you mentioned earlier is fiber optic and there is a bond for $200,000. Is it to cover the whole beach area? Yes. And uh, is it, the, it, would, it would run from here to the end of the boardwalk, wherever that may be at some point in time. From, uh, from, from, from the, the municipal Ball, building. And is it going to, are you going to accommodate to the public Wi-Fi? Jesus Christ. Uh, public Wi-Fi is already in the beach. Uh, okay. Are you going to like upgrade it since there is fiber optic? Are you going to upgrade it to provide more public Wi-Fi? At this point in time, we don't have any discussions mm -hmm. on that internally. 
And do you have any plan to put uh, uh, Wi-Fi for the entire city? Um, we've discussed it. Um, I know. That right now we're looking okay. at other options, um, which I can't say because it's outside of our scope. Are you going to have an RFQ for that? Um, we might have to do that, but at this point in time we don't know because we're still discussing with, with other vendors and options of what we could do. Um, but I don't anticipate anything for the next six to nine months. Okay, just for the record, I uh, have a company, you know, yeah, that, that does that, and we have really affordable gear that I'm willing to deploy in the city for real cheap price, you know to help the city out if there is a possibility to do that i had contacted you but i haven't heard back since so i'll call you again yeah. thanks and as far as uh i think you're talking about 219-8 to two hundred thousand dollars yes i'm going to make a motion to table that tonight yeah i don't have i don't have a problem with it okay i mean well, i just I, wanted I, to I, know I, I, I do <laughs> I do, so I'm going to make a motion to table it tonight. So that's not to table it tonight. Oh, okay. yes. Sorry. So that won't be voted on tonight. Okay, got you. Thanks. Hello, Felicia Simmons, um, <clears throat> ten um, thirty-four Sul Avenue. And just a quick question, just really quick: um, the substantial changes to the um, bonding is it going to go up or down? Um, the bonding um, request is it are we going to be asking for more or is it going to undergo down because before it was like six million to kind of do but is the bonding going to go up or down or you don't know we don't know we're going to look at what's the most beneficial cost wise for the long term is it an option to go up it's an option to go up it's an option to go down it's an option to stay the same. okay all right thank you Mary Nevin, uh, DLA Court. Um, so I have I have some questions about the executive sessions tonight, and um, if you can answer them when my three minutes are up. Um, first of all, the uh, the amendment to the waterfront redevelopment agreement that's going to that was discussed during the uh, private session. Um, you know, it was supposed to be a public-private partnership. Uh, so, you know, I have a problem whenever you go in the back and talk about this stuff and come out and it's, it's, it gets really complicated even if you're, you know, if you're paying attention to everything that comes out of your gyrations, you know, with the other side and all that. Um, but when you're, when you're actually left out of the deliberations, it's really hard to follow, you know, so you end up getting a lot of questions and a lot of aggravation um, thrown at you by people who say, well, what about this? I thought it was supposed to go this way. And, you know, the deliberations are, are important because that way people know what you considered and what you didn't consider and vice versa. So, um, for example, moving down the list, um, the attorney-client privilege, um, Perhaps uh, Fred would like to tackle that one. Um, you know, there's been a very liberal use of that attorney uh, uh, client privilege, um, which could apply to a lot of lot of things. And the public, you know, basically doesn't hear a lot of, of what your your mindset is, what you what your what kind of facts you're looking at. You know, we get these pages of resolutions uh, that are, you know, like blizzards of resolutions every every week, um, every two weeks, to be exact. Um, and I'd like to know, um, this is in the form of a, re a re resolution, sorry, um, for the, the uh, pool, the beach club. Um, I'm not sure I realize that we could have printed that out, right? From the from the website, that resolution. Um, but it would be nice, you know, if we could discuss it. Um, 
Is that going to be tabled, or are you going to go ahead with that resolution tonight? It's going to be voted on tonight. Yeah. Um, that's the problem. And could you answer the other things about the uh, attorney client and the amendment? With regard to the attorney client privilege, although that topic was listed on tonight's executive session, there was there were no matters that were addressed under that topic. So it actually was um, a mistake that it was included as a topic for discussion on tonight's executive agenda because there was there was nothing under that Thank you. issue that was addressed. And the amendment. Well, that was something that was discussed and something that's pending, and so the minutes aren't ready to be released yet. Do, do you have an estimate of when, they, then, when they'll be available? As soon as they're available, they'll be posted. Thank you. And, and sometimes, and I know, Maureen, I, I understand what you're saying, but sometimes when we're talking about something, if we're talking about negotiations or changing amendments, you know, we, we can't say, well, we're trying to do a to get c or else like what's the sense of negotiating when the people we're negotiating with know our strategy so that's a partial answer thank you. okay thank you and as far as waiting to wednesday night to ask questions about the agenda it's up friday, it's up friday. anybody can call any council people anybody can call the city manager anybody can call the clerk and get the answers before tonight. And if you're not happy with the answers, then you can frame your three minute questions around what you've been told instead of like what's just written and you'll have more information. So please feel free to call. Thank you. Thank you. Rita? Hi. Hi. Uh, 504, uh, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. Uh, how about this $440,000 bond? Is that going to be tabled tonight? Finish all your questions and... Okay. And it refers to Section 3, which, I mean, I don't know anything about bonding, but Section 3 is not here. Uh, you know, I know a little bit about bonding, and it, they always use the word bond, but it's borrowing. And we, we borrowed so much money in the last few years, I can't believe that we're asking for all this money to borrow. I, once upon a time, we borrowed three million dollars to build a senior center. I mean, who keeps track of all these bonding issues? I know we have a bonding company, but anyway, when we borrow the three million dollars, we got one floor, and the rest of the building went to Interfaith Neighbors. Seven apartments upstairs, and the stores downstairs, and we wind up paying seven thousand four hundred and something. Maybe that's changed now because we own a condo so you know we do things we borrow money and we give it to somebody else and they build a building and they're making all this money and we're paying i know the city manager wasn't here and he probably doesn't know that story and neither was the council but i was here and i don't think it's fair when you borrow money that we should really have a meeting when you borrow money and that should be explained, various departments. What does that mean? I mean, like, we don't know what you're doing when you borrow money. And who's keeping track? We don't get a report. We don't get beach revenue report. We don't get a parking report. We used to get all these things. We don't get them anymore. We have to ask for them. I, you know, if you're going to be transparent, be transparent all the way, not just halfway. I know you try and you wasn't here when all the bonding went on, but you're still borrowing money. And it, it, it's for our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. Some of the bonds are for the year 32. I don't think any of us are going to be here, except maybe that young lady. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, Come on, that's our great, great it's my great grandchildren. It's not fair. So you got to watch. I mean, like, I don't know about this four hundred and forty thousand dollar bond issue. I think it should be explained. Is it the draft? And there was another one on here, but I, I think you tabled it. I don't see it anymore. You had so much to read tonight. When can you pick these up? The ordinances and the resolutions. 
Can you pick them up before the meeting? All of them? Yes? Uh, um, They're online. Starting at 5 o'clock. them online. Then you got to request them. We'll provide like you copies, to... Rita. Huh? Like always, we always provide you copies. You give us a call, we'll give you a copy. But I didn't know we could get the ordinances, too. Yes? Why not? The entire package. Yeah, I, know. Know. Yeah. I always o'clock. get the bill resolution. I don't, I don't get anything else. And more people should be reading that because that's really an eye-opener about how money is being spent. The I don't know. We spent so much money on parties last month or the month before. The whole thing is parties. Kmart. Uh, Oriental uh, three minutes for us. Okay, Rita, you're three minutes up. Okay. Let me just correct. No, the 440 will not be tabled. That's for a traffic light, which is if you've come, you come to all the meetings, you hear people say we should put in like 10 traffic lights, but at 440,000 each, you're right. We'd borrow so much, your taxes go up. But are we trying to do one every year? Yes. So that bonding issue will be on tonight. It's for a traffic light. Uh, as far as like bonding in general, the state caps every city that you can only borrow 3.5%. We're at 2%. So we're not even close to like our max, but we never want to get close to our max because then say, if you have a sewer pipe that breaks for like 500 feet and it costs you a million dollars to fix it. And if you're at your max, then you can't bond for an emergency. So we'll never go close to the brink of the max Again, we're allowed to go to 3.5% of the rateables, I think over a three year, uh, over a three year uh, average. And right now we're at 2%. So we have, we have quite a bit more we can go, but we're not just gonna sit up here and continue to bond unless it's something that's truly needed. Traffic lights are needed. Uh, if you don't think so, talk to the man on 4th and Grand. Uh, I think you talk to, the man on the 1100 block of fourth, 1200 block, I apologize. And some things are needed, but we're not close to where our bond in cap is at. But we do need another traffic light that will be on tonight. And as far as the other bonding, it that's another reason maybe the 15 million is being held back because you got to get the most for the buck. So we don't know why do it, do it separately. That's doing both at one time. So to delay it two weeks or four weeks is not going to kill the program because the process has already started where the plans are being drawn up, the hard numbers are being squashed, and we're going to know what it's going to cost and whether ISTAR is going to pony up any money. If not, then we'll do it ourselves. And that's it in a nutshell. Your time's up. Your time's up. And Mayor, that's, like where, that's where the money's coming from. And Mayor, I'd like to, to remind everyone that last year, the city received its highest ever Moody's rating. We were upgraded by three levels from basically junk bond status to investor grade because of how we manage debt and how our debt program has been working. So there's no issue with the city with debt whatsoever. Um, this is from the investment companies. Thank you. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? We'll move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes this evening. We have executive session minutes of February 27th, workshop session minutes of February 27th, and regular session minutes of 20, uh, February 27th. May I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Move on to consent agenda. Resolution 2019-106, Resolution Approving Special Event Applications. Resolution 2019-107, Resolution Authorizing the Transfer of Real Estate Tax Credits from 2018 to 2019 Real Estate Tax Programs. Resolution 2019-108, Resolution Authorizing the Transfer of Appropriation Reserves in the Fiscal Year's 2018 Fiscal bus Budget. 2019-109 resolution approving the award of contract for regional contribution agreement project for 1036 Monroe Avenue. 2019-110 a resolution establishing regulations for the 2019 beach season. Resolution 2019-111 is a resolution appointing members to the Leslie Lake Commission. The uh, council will be appointing Edward Lincoln for an alternate member with a term expiring 12-31-19. 
2019-12 is a resolution authorizing the disposition of surplus property. And 2019-113 is a resolution revising resolution 2019-5 and clarifying the reappointment of Aguilar to the position of tax assessor for the city of Asbury Park and the establishment of tenure relating thereto. Does anybody wish to have any of those resolutions pulled from the consent agenda? Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We'll now move on to individual resolutions. The first one is resolution 2019-114, resolution amending temporary budget appropriations for the 2019 budget. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. No. No. Resolution 2019-115, resolution approving payment of bills. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2019-116, appointing Redevelopment Council Maserati Falcon and uh, authorizing the execution of the agreement of professional services associated therewith. It's Maraziti, not Maraziti. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was better because for a while we were saying uh, Maserati. Maserati. <laughs> 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 Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2019-117, appointing Redevelopment Council Archer Griner and authorizing the execution of the agreement and professional services associated therewith. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2019-118, resolution approving change order number two for bridge and Heck Street improvements. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2019-119, resolution authorizing purchase of portable quad band radios. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2019-120, a resolution of the mayor and council of the city of Asbury Park acting as a redevelopment entity granting conceptual improvement approval to Madison Asbury Retail regarding the renovation of the 4th Avenue Pavilion on block 4502 lots 113 1100 Ocean Avenue and referring the matter to the Planning Board for appropriate approvals. May I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Fred, were you going to read something now? No, 121. Oh, 121. Okay. That's well, a nice resolution. Never mind. Oh, okay. I'm always my bad. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2019-121, a resolution of the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park acting as a redevelopment entity granting conceptual approval to the Asbury Partners LLC regarding the Beach Club installation on Block 4502, Lot 1 and 23, 1500 Ocean Avenue and referring the matter to the Planning Board for appropriate approvals. Have a motion, please. Move, move it. it. Second. Second. Fred? Do we have to move to amend, Fred, or no? No, because no. Okay. we made the change already. So um, this resolution will uh, grant conceptual approval to the Beach Club and pass the matter on to the Planning Board for appropriate approvals, which is in accordance with the 2002 Waterfront Redevelopment Plan, as well as the subsequent Developers Agreement uh, adopted uh, subsequently. Um, the resolution contains conditions and it indicates that the Mayor and Council hereby make the following additional comments and recommendations to the Planning Board. The applicant shall provide in the planning board submission, additional street furniture screening for utility meters, a single trench shall be used for utilities, and a photometric analysis of both the interior and exterior lighting shall be provided. 
The design of the seven foot tall fence along the easterly property line should be reconsidered so that it will be more visually appealing on the boardwalk side. Design elements such as a mural, landscaping, or various planes may be considered and incorporated. And actually, I misspoke. That now has been amended so that it reads the design and height of the seven foot tall fence along the easterly property line should be reconsidered. Uh, the club, when in operation, will comply with applicable city noise ordinances and the State of New Jersey Noise Control Act so as to prevent excessive noise from transmitting beyond the property lines of the property. All boardwalk access from 6th and 7th Avenue shall be completed and open to the public upon temporary certificate of occupancy or certificate of occupancy of the beach club and construction staging shall not interfere with the rebuilding of the boardwalk. Thank you. Roll call. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We'll move on to ordinances, second hearing. Ordinance 2019-4, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park, Supplementing Traffic and Parking Regulations, Chapter 7, Designating Parking for Electric and Plug-in Hybrid Vehicles. Can I have a motion to open this ordinance to the public, please? Move it. Second. Second. Anybody like to be heard? Motion to close. Second. Well, I need a first. <laughs> Move it. Move it. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2019-4. Move to adopt. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2019-5, an ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending and supplementing Chapter 7 of the Code of the City of Asbury Park regarding traffic and parking regulations. Can I have a motion to open this to the public, please? Move, Move. it. Second. Seeing no comments, can I have a motion to close? Motion to close. Second. Second. I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2019-5. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2019-6. This is an ordinance providing for various beach utility improvements. Um, this is the $15 million bond. I believe you want to table. table. Move to table. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. And just for the record, the tabling is to the next council meeting, correct? To March 27, 2019, correct. Ordinance 2019-7, ordinance bond ordinance providing for the parking utility improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth State, New Jersey. Appropriating $440,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $440,000 in bonds and notes to finance the cost thereof. Can I have a motion to open this to the public, please? Move it. Second. Seeing no public comment, have a motion to close, please. Marie Nevin, DLA Court. Um, can I get um, a total on our current bond debt? This is off the top of my head. You can call yeah. Joanne. Huh? You can call Joanne, the CFO, tomorrow, and she'll give it to you exactly. I'm going to say off the top of my head. Oh, but, 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 well, a uh, range. I mean, twenty-two million. Twenty-two million. No. Don't we already have one for no, fifty-five no, okay, okay, okay. million? Because I think the sewer's thirty. No, the sewer does not count because it's a liquidating utility, so that does not count against our. Three and a half percent, thirty-eight million. But you should contact the CFO and get an exact number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done that before. Thanks. Thirty-eight million, which is two percent, and then the sewer plant has another twenty-two million, which doesn't count towards the three and a half percent because it's a liquidating authority. As per the state of New Jersey. So I would have said 50, so I wouldn't know. It's 60. Yeah. 38, 22, 60. Yeah, but you're saying don't count the sewer. Don't count the sewer. So when people ask me that question, am I counting? Do I tell them the sewer? Because I always say 50 to 60 because of the sewer. Yes. In, in reality, yes, there's okay. $60 million bought it, but only 38 of it counts against their 3.5% where we can go to. Okay. Motion to close the public? Move. 
Second. Motion to adopt ordinance 2019-7. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Next is ordinance 2019-8. I believe it's the desire of the council to table this. Can I have a motion to table, please? Move to table. Second. Second. Question. I don't remember the first reading of this. So how does it get to the second reading? First reading was at the when we did all the other bond ordinances. It was? Yes, it was. Okay. I wasn't the only one who didn't remember, so. <laughs> <coughs> no, I did. I said. <laughs> in, you said in tonight's package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said in tonight's package. But in past packages? I think, okay. The table. I think in the past, if I had seen it, I would have voted to table that. So. Okay. Okay. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. And this will be rescheduled for March 27th. 2019-9 bond ordinance providing for various 2019 capital improvements buying into city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth State, New Jersey, appropriating $2 million, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,904,759 bonds or notes to the city to finance part of the cost thereof. I have a motion to open this ordinance to the public, please. Move it. Second. Second. I know you're probably tabling it. I think you have to state your name and address. Oh, Felicia um, Simmons, 1034-11. And um, the vagueness of it, um, I don't know if I'm missing it. I could have. My allergies are kicking up, so I'm a little flighty. But what is the thereof? What are we using this $2 million for? Capital improvements throughout the city. Like example of? There's a copy of it on the ordinance. Do you have a copy of it? Yeah. It lists everything it's being spent on. It's on the table, Felicia. Okay. Section 3. All right. Okay. That's why. I'm looking through here, and I'm like, it's Section 3. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Motion to close? Mm -hmm. Motion to close. Second. Motion to adopt Ordinance 2019-9. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman. Yes. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Council Member Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Finally, Ordinance 2019-10, an ordinance establishing salaries for certain employees within the city of Asbury Park, County of Monmouth, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to open this to the public, please? Move it. Okay. Okay. Read a question. Yeah. Read them around. Uh, I always get scared when I hear certain employees. Uh, could you name them? It's Deputy Tax Assessor. And what? Deputy tax assessor. It's a range, a minimum. Oh, it's a, it's yeah, I, I saw the range. Right. But which is it? Is it 35 or maximum is 70? It's someplace in the middle. I, I, I'm not saying that. I, Philippe, uh, <laughs> huh? I'm not trying to be a wise guy. I honestly do not know the salary. Uh, uh, so, Michael, if you know it, whatever the salary is. But it's. There's no person. We're creating a position as deputy tax assessor. Um, we're actually interviewing for it tomorrow. There's no person. There's this creates the position so we can hire somebody. Why is that? Why are we creating it? Because the tax assessor has taken other positions, and instead of being here two days a week, he's here now one day a week. So the goal is to find someone full time to be trained, so he can move on to much greener pastures than he makes here. Um, and this is the the process of that. Okay, you explained it. I have a motion to close the public. Move it. Second. We have a motion to adopt ordinance 2019-10. Move it. Second. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. There being no further business, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. This is always like a, it, 